Hello boys and girls, guess what? We got packages to unbox, that's right, I realize that I haven't really been doing any unboxings formally, uh, so we're gonna resolve that, um, as well as gonna touch on a few things that I forgot to show you in the last, uh, family video video. Um, normally I try to pick them all off, off the shelf, you know, just to make sure I don't forget anything, but sometimes shit happens, so... Uh, just to uh, show you off a few things that I forgot to, sh to uh, mention before, we got Cold Pursuit uh, on 4K with the slipcover. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Haven't watched it yet. Um, heard pretty good things about this one. Uh, I was very lucky to find this for as cheap as I found it. Like, it was like one ninety nine, and that was Dunkirk on 4K, which I haven't watched yet, and I feel bad about it, but... There you go. Um, I will find the slipcover for this, hopefully before too long, but I was so glad to finally find it at a reasonable price. Same with another movie I wanted to see but never did, which was Ford vs. Ferrari with the slipcover, but no, uh, no Blu-ray disc, but I bet I can find that separately for cheap. Um, you know how there are a lot of movies that it's like you want to see it, but you don't really want to pay out the ass for it? Well, there you go. Um, Chris Stockman had this movie in his collection, Grand Piano, which I've never seen, um, but I like a lot of what Elijah Wood is doing, kind of post-Lord of the Rings. I like that he's doing more avant-garde things. I'm about halfway through this movie, and I like it so far, and I'll finish it up, um, which is, uh, no, was that? Sorry, yeah, okay, sorry, I was just checking if it was, uh, Knives Out here. I was trying to see if this was Don Johnson or Sam Rockwell, and it was Don Johnson like I thought it was, but, you know, I'm about halfway through this, and I like it, um, you know, it's, uh, it's funny because Ryan Johnson is a bit of a, oh yeah, there's no discs in here because I'm watching the 4K and it didn't come with the, D, with the uh, Blu-ray and I couldn't find it separately, but it's funny, Ryan Johnson's become somewhat of a pariah as far as the, uh, internet nerds are concerned, uh, but I think he's quite a talent and uh you know he's a talent with this movie too uh but yeah eager to see where it goes uh now that i'm kind of at the halfway point uh never heard of this movie but i like the cover and the fact that it has a slip cover uh miss bala well i've i've heard of it in the, that i you know it, i've just encountered it in passing but i haven't um seen it or anything don't know what it's about but i like the cover and i like that it has a slip cover so there you go pretty simple um and, uh, what else do we have? This is another one that I wanted to see that I didn't want to pay out the ass to see, and that was, uh, Maleficent, uh, Mistress of Evil, and, um, the, um, um, I, this one does not have the, uh, f the Blu-ray disc either. I liked the first one quite a lot, um, but I did not see the second one, and I'll have to track down the first one in 4K now, as well as the Blu-ray disc, uh, for this one. And then, um, I really dug this one, and this was the 2000, uh, 2009, was it? Yeah, 2009 animated Wonder Woman film that DC put out. Uh, this was the re-release version to, uh, oh, look at that, just realized I didn't take those stickers off of the, uh, discs. But, uh, yeah, that was the, uh, the 2009 uh, animated one that they put out that I thought was just fantastic, and they put it out in 2017 again, uh, they re-released it to coincide with the live-action Wonder Woman, and that's why I have this commemorative edition here, and, uh, yeah, it was fantastic, I mean, Wonder Woman has always been great, uh, even before the movie, and, uh, this was a good example of just why that was the case, and, uh, why that remains the case, and I really can't imagine anybody but Gal Gadot playing that character in live action, and then just a few DVDs that I picked up, um, 100 Acres of Hell with, uh, I got this one just because it has Catherine Cochran in it, and, or Corcoran, I, I, I've, I think it was, uh, Lloyd would always say, uh, Cochran, I've heard him say in interviews, but I think the correct pronunciation is Corcoran, and that's how it's, how it's spelled, but yeah, I know that she's in this, so that's why I wanted to get it. And then also, this is the Asylum's uh, ripoff of Cloverfield when it was new, and it's called Monster. Very descriptive. 
And unfortunately, this is another case that is just, you know, one stray breath will just destroy it. But I have some good news. I have some uh, replacement uh, Blu-ray and DVD uh, cases, some just blank ones that I can replace a lot of these ones that are falling apart, which is really good because I don't like having these cases that look like they're just going to explode more than they already have. Um, now, that is all for the ones from the family video trips that I forgot to show you, which that should be the last, uh, that, you know, last one that I did, that should be the last family video, uh, trip, just have it as that trilogy, but on the way home, I did think to stop in at Best Buy, because I knew that there were some exclusives that I wanted to get, chief among these, boom, the, um, Full Metal Jacket 4K Steelbook exclusive to Best Buy, um, for a lot of people, this is their favorite Stanley Kubrick film, and, uh, well, I'm glad to have it back in the collection because, you know, obviously Stanley Kubrick's my hero. Um, a lot of people that don't even necessarily know who Stanley Kubrick is, they really love this film, and, uh, you know, it's, for a lot of people, it's their favorite Kubrick film. Um, it's, honestly, it's one of my least favorites, um, I think because... At that time, you know, you'd already had The Deer Hunter, you'd already had, um, uh, you had Apocalypse Now, you had Platoon, which came out the year before, and, you know, that was something that, uh, the, the, the documentary, Stanley Kubrick, A Life in Pictures, brought up, which was that, you know, by that time, it wasn't, he wasn't the fastest gun in town when it came to the Vietnam movie, um, and it, wasn't quite as innovative as his other ones, but it's still a really high quality film. Definitely worth checking out, uh, especially for Arlie Ermey's performance and for Vincent D'Onofrio and for, um, what's his face? Um, Matthew Modine, um, as Private Joker, which, I mean, it's def it's, it's a Kubrick film. It's, you know, tip top. It's just, uh, when I'm, when I say that I'm comparing it to all his other ones, which everything he's done is like tip top, but you know, some kind of splitting hairs, but another exclusive to Best Buy is Whiplash in 4K, uh, which I sold the other Blu-ray that I had of it, uh, because I knew this was coming out, and I got the Steelbook with the bloody drums, which I already said how much I love this movie, and I just, I could go on and on about that, um, and then, uh, I didn't expect to get this one, but I'm, s I found it with the slipcover, so I thought I had to grab it, which is the double feature of Us and Get Out, which, I'll be honest, I have not watched either of these. I know, I'm a horrible person, um, but that's why I got it, so I could rectify that situation, so, you know, that way people can stop hating me and beating me in the streets, um... So that's it for uh, Best Buy, and then we have just a few stragglers, um, just random stragglers here. We got a new release, which was David Cronenberg Shivers, got that off of Amazon, sold the digital code. Um, this was one of, if not uh, Cronenberg's, it was an early work of his, I don't know if it was his first necessarily, but um, it was one of his first for sure. And it helped to pave the way for the rest of his films to get made, like Rabbit and things like that. I um, have not watched this one yet, but I'm so glad that Vestron put it out and I got it with the slipcover there, which that's a great slip. And then uh, this one I got off of eBay and it said that it was shipping from South Korea, but it got here a lot faster, so I think it came from the US. Uh, this is a South Korean edition of the film and it is the... 1997 uh canadian sci-fi horror film cube which the that's an awesome slip cover um cube is a film that i don't know if a lot of people have heard of um that's the that's you know the more familiar cover but with some different coloration i don't know how many people have actually heard of cube um it's something that um you know, I, um, uh, it's a film that I think is a really, it's basically Saw before Saw came out, you know, that's kind of the best way I can phrase it, except it's more cerebral than Saw, and it's not, it, it has its gory moments, but it's not like a gore fest per se, um, I think it's got some more twists and turns, it's got, you know, really clever writing, it's got really smart characters, 
it's got a pretty fascinating environment um, and you don't even know why they're in this cube. Um, highly recommend it. If anything, it's sort of like if you cross Saw with like Lost, you know, as far as like these weird like head scratching things that you're like, what the fuck? Like, how did that happen? And they don't fully explain it, but the tension is really high. The acting is really good. It's regarded as kind of a, a hallmark of Canadian sci-fi slash horror, so um, highly recommend it. And uh, so that catches you up for the stuff that I've already unboxed, and now we get into uh, some of the stuff that I have yet to unbox. Uh, first up is from Amazon. These ones I knew were coming today. Um, and uh, so we're going to just tear right into it. Uh, so we got, first up, um, this shouldn't be too much of a shocker, we have the, uh, Rob Zombie Trilogy here, um, which, I don't know why they called it the Rob Zombie Trilogy instead of the Firefly Trilogy, or, like, um, Walmart put out, it said, uh, M. Night Shyamalan's East Rail, uh, 177, one, one, uh, Trilogy, which, I forgot I had scissors here. Um, makes it a lot less aneurysm-inducing. Um, yeah, I don't know why they didn't put the Firefly thing in there, because just saying the Rob Zombie trilogy, it's like, well, okay, thanks. You know, uh, that wouldn't really help me outside of knowing, like, who directed it. I mean, like, story-wise, that doesn't really tell me anything, um, other than who made it. But, yeah, so we got House of a Thousand Corpses, The Devil's Rejects, um, I've got a digital code for all three, which I'll be selling at some point, um, but yeah, we got, um, House of a Thousand Corpses, we got Devil's Rejects, and we got, uh, Three from Hell, which I sold the, uh, Three from Hell, um, the, uh, whatever I'm trying to say, the Blu-ray disc, uh, that came with that 4K, I, you know, donated the slipcover, I kept the 4K disc, and, uh, what I'm going to do is pop it in with the rest of these, and then I'll have that one in 4K, which is the only one that's in 4K, and I was kind of hoping that the other two would come out in 4K, but they haven't yet, and uh, so I just thought that, you know, it'd be more convenient to have these all in one place, and plus on the side it just says the Rob Zombie Trilogy, so I can put it in R, um, and I, I really hate, like, um, with the uh, Man With No Name trilogy that I have, like, I put it in M for man, uh, but then looking across the uh, the shelves right there, it starts with a fistful of dollars, and you're like, well, shouldn't that be under F? But then, you know, it's just, it's a mess. So the more that I can avoid that by just having these, you know, uh, film series that don't really have the series name in the title, you know, the more that I can have those just all together, the better. And then the second item um, was the re-release of the Vincent Price Collection Volume 1 from Scream Factory. It's the re-release. They put it back into print, um, which it was out of print for a while, and it got, like, up in, like, the $200 range, uh, which was kind of ridiculous. This particular release is, uh, sorry, I knocked over the drink of Unboxing Champions off-camera, which I had started to drink, but luckily I had it sealed. Um, yeah, they re-released the Vincent Price Collection Volume 1, um, and they put out, part of the reason why is because they put out the theatrical cut and the extended cut of The Mask of the Red Death, which is new to this set, and they actually released that disc separately. Um, but what all do we have here? We got a bunch of stuff. Um, we have The Pit and the Pendulum, The Mask of the Red Death, both cuts of that. The Haunted Palace, The Fall of the House of Usher, The Abominable Dr. Fibes, and Witchfinder General, a.k.a. The Conqueror Worm, which I sold my copy of The Abominable Dr. Fibes, uh, the, the Arrow one that was exclusive to the UK, because I knew that I'd be getting this. Uh, we got our booklet here, um, all kinds of cool stuff about the movies, which I have to admit that I haven't seen any of them yet, but that's why I got the set, because I knew I would love them, because it's Vincent Price. Uh, who doesn't love Vincent Price? Um, and I'm gonna track down volume two and three. 
the trick is just to find them at a at a price that doesn't cost you an arm and a leg because uh, they're both, I think, out of print now. The second one for sure. But maybe given that they put this one back into print, maybe they'll put uh, two and three back into print too. Who knows? Um, you never know with Scream Factory, like how long things will be in print and why they'll go out of print or whatever. Usually with these, like, uh, well, these all say that they're from MGM, so maybe that's part of why it was relatively easy. But, you know, I, I imagine that the reason why it wasn't as easy with some of these other ones is because they come from multiple studios and stuff. And that can explain why they go out of print uh, when they do. But anyway, glad to have that. And then we got... Uh, I'm going to save this one for last because this is actually the horror pack uh, for this month. And then... Uh, but our dear friend uh, JDC Outlet from Alberta, Canada, I got uh, a big order from him, which I had wanted to do uh, for quite some time. Uh, been too long since I ordered from his amazing eBay store, to which I shall link you uh, in the description below. And uh, please be kind and show him some love, because he's been really good to me. Uh, and I'm trying to open this box, with even with my trusty scissors. The task is needlessly arduous, but that is also how he assures that everything comes in one piece as you know is a that's what a good uh ebay seller should do and i'm gonna try to make a good incision here it's like trying to perform a uh, heart surgery with a chainsaw <clears throat> but someone's got to do it right Whew. come on now That one's on there tight. That's what she said. Um, all right. And got a lot of paper, a lot of paper, a lot of bubble wrap, a lot of bubble wrap. Um, a lot of slip covers, a lot of slip covers, a lot of interesting things. A lot of interesting things. Be gone, box. All right. Um, so we got several things all neatly bundled together into nice... Uh, wrapping, and uh, I tried to find as many cool and interesting things, uh, as many interesting Canadian Canadian exclusive editions of things as I could, as I always do. I always endeavor to do that anyway, and uh, I think I came away with some good things, which I'll show you in just a bit. I actually have another order on the way. Um, and I don't know when that'll come, maybe in a week or two. Um, you never know. Things are kind of, I think, maybe picking back up in terms of, uh, you know, getting things out to people through the mail compared to what they once were uh, during the earlier stages of the pandemic. But at any rate, <sighs> big stack here, so let's get to it. We got uh, The Poison Rose with John Travolta and Morgan Freeman with that super cool Canadian slip. Um, I love the look of, um, these VVS films. I love the look of their slipcovers. Um, I'm getting familiar with all these different Canadian, uh, companies that put movies out. And, uh, John Travolta is in a similar class to Nicolas Cage as far as committing to a performance and doing things that a lot, not a lot of people will do. He does get more into, like, maybe traditionally over-the-top territory, but, you know, that's half the fun. Next up is a horror movie with Lawrence Fishburne and the late, great Bill Paxton called The Colony. So that's a cool cover there. Um, the, as I've said many times, the Canadian slip covers and just Canadian covers in general tend to be a lot cooler than the American ones. Um, and then we got a movie that I really, really dug. Um, and I dug it based on Chris Duckman's uh, recommendation, and that was Premium Rush. I'm surprised that this didn't get more buzz or more, uh, not a lot of people know about this movie, but it really is quite good. Definitely, uh, give it a watch it, with, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Michael Shannon and, uh, a bunch of cool people in there. Jamie Chung, uh, does a good job. Next up, I've heard great things about this, uh, Werner Herzog film with Nicolas Cage 
and Eva Mendes, so how can you go wrong? And that is Bad Lieutenant, Port of Call, New Orleans. And uh, I've seen some clips from it where he's like this cokehead uh, cop or detective or whatever he is. Um, but I've seen some clips of that and I'm like, well, that alone is worth it. And uh, I think it was the cinema snob who said that when he saw this film in the theater that he was like unabashedly like howling with laughter and like older ladies were looking at him, which, you know, that'll, that'll you know, that's a reason to watch it. Speaking of, we actually have quite a few Nicolas Cage films here because I actually bought a drama bundle from him, uh, from JDC Outlet, and we got uh, the film that won Nicolas Cage the Best Actor Oscar in 1995, and that is Leaving Las Vegas with Elizabeth Shue as well, and she did a great job in this role, uh, in the in her role in this film, and uh, highly highly recommend this film if you're able to see it. It's probably one of the definitive Las Vegas movies and uh, a really, really searing drama about alcoholism. Like, there's nothing glamorous about the alcoholism in here, and nor is there any real hope. Uh, like, he explicitly says, you know, he's going to Las Vegas to drink himself to death, and so you know that right away, and there's no hope of him, like, snapping out of it or anything like that. Um, it's just watching this person's decline and he definitely deserved that Best Actor Oscar. Um, anybody that doesn't think he can act, watch that film. And every film he's ever done, because he can do all kinds of things, but that one especially. Next up, we got a movie called Pay the Ghost, which, again, we got that amazing VVS uh, films slipcover there. Um, I guess this is a supernatural, either horror or thriller or whatever, um, but, you know, it's part of the Nicolas Cage filmography, so we gotta have it in the collection, because we're loyal like that. Um, but yeah, I like that slipcover design a lot more than the U.S. one. And the U.S. one's a little hard to find now, so I had to jump on this when I got the chance. Next up, um, heard really good things about this film, um, but I never saw it, uh, but I shall check it out. It's a movie called uh, The Frozen Ground, and I was trying to get that sticker off there, but yeah, The Frozen Ground, another VVS uh, films slipcover there. I like that design quite a lot. Um, yeah, I heard good things about this film, written and directed by Scott Walker. I feel like I should know who that is, but I don't, right off the top of my head anyway. But yeah, it's got John Cusack in here as well, and Vanessa Hudgens. How about that? Um, and then we got... Uh, one that you saw in the collection before, but I sold the other one that I ha had of Joe, and this was put out by Entertainment One. I don't think that this Canadian version, I don't think it has a slipcover, and that's part of why I sold the other one, because I'm like, well, if I don't have to track down a slipcover, then fine, you know, that saves me some trouble. If this does come with one, then I'll, I'll find one, but still, I uh, heard good things about that one. All right, and then we got... Uh, we got um, one that you saw in the collection before, but it didn't have the slipcover uh, with it, and I ended up selling that edition, and I got this edition instead because, again, I like the slipcover design a lot more. That is End of Watch um, with the sticker on here that I got to pick off eventually. But uh, once more, VVS Films, much cooler slipcover there. Got the French on the inside there, so, you know, that's pretty sweet. And, uh, looking forward to seeing this finally. Heard great things. And, uh, we got, um, a film that I haven't finished yet, and that's Collateral, um, with Tom Cruise, and it's a Michael Mann film. Uh, and I liked what I saw of it, I just didn't quite finish it or whatever. Something else came up, inevitably. Uh, because that always happens. Next up, uh, remember I have, uh... Do I have it here? Yes. Ugh. I have to contort my body. Ugh. To, yeah, so you remember I have Triple X Day of the Union. Well, guess what? I have the f original Triple X now. Finally. Ugh, took forever. But yeah, I finally have the original Triple X. I remembered seeing trailers for the first Triple X when I was a kid because I think the trailers might have played with Spider-Man, if I recall. Um, that would make sense, because that was a Columbia Pictures film, and so was Triple X. Um, but yeah, I got the uh, 
the first one in there, so now this one doesn't look like such a, you know, uh, whatever I'm trying to say, an outlier. Then I'll have to find the third one. And then this is, uh, why am I loyal to you, Dane Cook? I think it's because us Danes have to stick together and it's good luck, Chuck, which it's funny because this did not get good reviews at all. And, um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's great or even all that good, really. Um, I think it's an, it's a halfway decent premise. It just sort of, you know, one thing you could say is that it might teeter on the side of misogynistic, um, you know, and some people would like really say that that's, you know, very much the case or like it's gross or it's, it's, whatever, like, I remember, I think it was Roger Ebert who said just ick, you know, when he talked about it, and, um, you know, you could definitely make that argument, I wouldn't, uh, put it past you, if anything, you'd be really quite validated by it, but got it, because, A, I think, uh, Dan Cook is good in this, and also, um, I think that he has good chemistry with Jessica Alba, I think they're both underestimated. I know that Jessica Alba um, has actually made quite a lot of strides outside of acting with her consumer advocacy work. And then Dane Cook, um, I'm still waiting for his big comeback. You know, I, I think it's out there. Um, but and, and I also just think he's just not been served uh, as well as he could be with, you know, good scripts and stuff. Um and then we got uh, two films back to back here. We got The Man with the Iron Fists 1 and 2. And uh, these are both uh, martial arts films that I believe the RZA. Uh, didn't he direct this film? Um, yeah, filmed by RZA um, of the Wu Tang Clan. And uh, this is. Uh, and uh, it's got. Uh, it says Quentin Tarantino Presents, and it's also got. Eli Roth attached to it, if I recall, in some form or fashion. I could be wrong about that. Um, I don't really remember, but anyway, um, we have the first one there, which I still need to watch these films, but trying to get more martial arts back in the collection, and, uh, yeah, did, was, was Eli Roth involved in this? I cannot remember. Um, it might have been, but I don't know. A lot of the Tarantino familiars, like, uh, you know, you had uh, Lucy Liu back in the game, and, and also some people that hadn't been in any of their stuff before, like uh, Jamie Chung again, Dave Bautista, Russell Crowe, of all things, um, or of all people. And then the second one, which, um, again, haven't seen it, but very um, eager to dive into it. You know, it's it's just neat to see uh, martial arts films come from unexpected sources, but I do think the Wu-Tang Clan members, they were really big into martial arts and kind of carried that all the way through their careers. And then we got a movie that I guess didn't really get good reviews. I remembered seeing the trailer for it, and I was like, that looks really funny, but I never actually saw it, and that was The Other Woman. Um, and, you know, I like all three of these, uh, actresses. We got, uh, Leslie Mann and Cameron Diaz and Kate Upton, um, and, uh, yeah, I just never saw this film for some reason, but I really wanted to, because I remembered the trailer, to me, anyway, looked pretty funny, and I don't say that too often when it comes to modern comedies, but that, you know, I did want to check it out, and again, the price point was low enough to where I was like, yeah, why not? And, you know, we got some, uh, we got some bosomatic action there, so, I mean, we got that, if nothing else. And then um, we have another kind of later period uh, John Travolta film, uh, which is a film called, I'm trying to get that off of there, uh, not good, um, a film called The Forger, which again, much cooler slipcover design there. And uh, that one has Christopher Plummer in there too. And he was actually in Knives Out that I was watching. Um, and uh, he's one of Canada's luminary actors, that's right, uh, he's a Canadian actor, and, uh, yeah, but, uh, that's a much cooler design, I think, than what you normally see with this film, I'm gonna have to go back and take care of all those stickers as much as I can, and then what else do we have, oh yeah, I loved this film, um, Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow, why don't people talk about this film anymore? Like, this is quite a technically impressive film for its time. And I really love, like, the 
World War II era, um, or was it World War II or World War I? Um, I think it was the 40s is when this is set, but it's that, like, pulp, uh, it's that pulp, kind of like, uh, the Rocketeer in that same respect, but it's like that, um, somewhat, I guess you'd say steampunk or, like, alternate, uh, timeline World War II movie, uh, you could see, like, Captain America or the Rocketeer, you could see them fitting in to a film like this really, really well, or, like, Indiana Jones or something like that, um, it's, uh, I thought it was really damn good, you know, and it was by a director named Cary Conran. My, I don't, what else did he do after this? I mean, this is such a criminally underrated film, like, and it was made, you know, kind of in limited circumstances, but the animation was gorgeous, and I think it still largely holds up. It looks like a comic book or like a painting or something, and I just like that kind of retro future look. Um, I think that's really, really cool. Um, definitely recommend this. This needs like a 4K or a, you know, super special edition or like a cult, you know, movies release, like a Shout Select or a something. Because this movie deserves a lot more uh, praise and recognition than it has gotten. And then we got uh, Rescue Dawn with uh, Christian Bale. And this is another Werner Herzog film. And uh, Steve Zahn's in there, too. Always wanted to check that one out, but I never did. And then we got another Jessica Alba film, Into the Blue, which I remembered um, the trailer for this during, like, Jessica Alba fever uh, back in, like, the mid-2000s. This was kind of her big, you know, uh, big period of fame. And then also uh, has the late, great uh, Paul Walker in there as well, um, which, you know... I guess you could chalk it up to somewhat of nostalgia for, you know, simpler times, but also just, you know, it's neat to see what people were doing in their earlier film days. And uh, next up, I watched this film with a good friend of mine, but I honestly can't really remember it very well, and I want to watch it again when I can really focus on it, and that's uh, Deliver Us From Evil, which um, I just don't really remember it all that well. Like, I must not have been like focusing or whatever but uh i'll watch it again which is why i got it um and i like the thing on the the box uh the quote from sean edwards of fox tv it says suspenseful intense and creepy it's the exorcist meets seven which i did get those vibes so i think that's an accurate description but for the life of me i just cannot remember it very well Um, and then we got a movie called, uh, Selfless with, um, what's his face? Ryan Reynolds, and I believe the other one has been Kingsley, but the sticker is in the way again. Um, which, this was from the producers of Looper, and it was actually directed by Tarsim, I don't know if he's, uh, Tarsim Singh, Singh, uh, it's S-I-N-G-H. Um, he was the same person who did The Fall, and he did The Cell, uh, with Jennifer Lopez, brilliant visual director, and that's why I wanted to che- uh, to check this out. He got his start in music videos, and I believe that he did um, the REM video, Losing My Religion, which that was one of his big claims to fame prior to moving into feature films. And then I used to have this film, uh, and then I got rid of it at some point. It was A Most Violent Year, which... I need to watch, um, but it's got a great cast. I love Oscar Isaac, love Jessica Chastain, David Oyelowo, um, Albert Brooks, I love, uh, he was so good in Drive, but yeah, finally got that back in the collection. I like the purple, um, this case is nicer than the U.S. one, and then we got, uh, August Osage County based on a play, which, um, I know that this got some Oscar nominations when it came out, never saw it, um, but it seems like uh, one of those movies that I would enjoy because, you know, when I was in college, I I was never, like, a theater kid formally, Uh, like, I didn't major in drama or anything, but my world, um, studying filmmaking and stuff, my world intersected with the drama kids quite a lot, so I felt like I was sort of like an honorary, almost like an honorary uh, drama kid in some ways, and so I got exposed to a lot of plays and, you know, things that I hadn't ever really seen before or experienced before, and, uh, 
when did this come out? Uh, 2013 to 2014? Yeah. Uh, so this would have been just after I, uh, graduated, I believe, was when this came out. But, uh, so in other words, I was still kind of hot off the heels of that kind of, you know, having seen a lot of plays that I hadn't seen before and that kind of stuff. Um, and, uh, always meant to see this one, just never did. Um, that was brand new there. Um, but yeah, killer cast in here, and I've, I've heard good things about the play itself, and I think with a lot of film adaptations of plays, they do tend to translate to film pretty well, at least in terms of format. Um, obviously the, the quality of the cast and stuff is variable, but like, format-wise, I think that drama plays tend to translate to film very well. Not always with musicals, though. There's something about a lot of musicals when they translate to the screen that they just don't work. And then we got a uh, movie, Dinner for Schmucks. I wanted to see this just based on the title, and it was actually my ex fiance. Um, she showed it to me, and I was surprised at how much I liked it. Um, you know, it was. I think it's pretty underrated. Um, it's uh, it's got one line in it in particular, um, which actually it's the um, if I recall it was the Chiodo brothers who did the mouse sculptures that uh, Steve Carell's character does. That's like his odd hobby. Um, but what I really do there was this one line that he says that I just fucking lost it with laughter for whatever reason. It just hit me right there, which is like you said, it was a. Uh, well, as John Lennon said, yeah, I'm paraphrasing, but he was like, well, as John Lennon once said, you might say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not. <laughs> and he left off the, uh, I'm not the only one. And I just, for whatever reason, his delivery of that line, I was laughing for like five minutes straight. We had to like pause and let me get it out of my system. Um, so it must have just hit me right that day. Um but anyway, um, we got a, uh, Gina Carano action film Haywire with this much snazzier, cooler, kind of silvery, uh, Canadian slip, which we talked about, uh, Gina Carano before in the previous video, and this was actually a Steven Soderbergh film. Um, Steven Soderbergh's an interesting person because he's a critically acclaimed director. He won, uh, Best Director for Traffic, um you know, very well regarded, um, but he does not do, uh, possessory credits, so in other words, he doesn't do, uh, Steven Soderbergh's high, uh, Haywire, he doesn't do a film by, you know, he doesn't do any of that stuff, and the reason why he doesn't is because he wants the films to stand on their own, and also to where he can do films that people wouldn't necessarily think that he could do, um, so, like, he can do dramas, comedies, uh, avant-garde films, action films, uh, heist films, whatever they are, and that way he's more of an artist and less of a brand, which I can definitely see the appeal of that, uh, because you don't want to be stuck in any one thing. I do think that, like, Stanley Kubrick was very much a, a uh, and Alfred Hitchcock was, like, the originator of that, um, or one of them, for sure, but of the possessory credit because they had, but they had, like, such a firm auteur stamp, you know, all over every department of the film, um, in a way that Steven Soderbergh, I don't think, has, and I think by design, um, and that's perfectly good. I think that it was, um, Robert Wise who deliberately didn't do that as well, like, he wanted his style to evolve, um, with the films themselves, and only got a few left. Um, this, these two you've actually seen before, the American versions of Dark Tide and The Duff. I sold the other two that I had because instead of, you know, some of these it was like, well, you know, you could spend however much to track down the slipcover for the American one or for, like, either the same price or, like, maybe two bucks more or something you could get the, um, the Canadian one and you can sell the other one and actually come out you know, cheaper on the whole, and so that's what I did, and also just because I think they look nicer, um, and, uh, yeah, so we, but you've seen those ones before, The Duff and, uh, and, uh, Dark Tide here with Halle Berry, I like that slipcover design, again, uh, BVS Films there, and this is, uh, a shark, you know, film with another, you know, well-known person, 
um, which you don't see as many of those these days as you would want to. Um, but there's always room for more shark movies, I think. And it's from the director of Blue Crush and uh, Into the Blue, so he clearly likes his uh, seafaring movies. Um, and then uh, I just noticed another sticker on here that I'm going to have to rip my hair out over because I'm kind of uh, anal like that. That's what she said. Um, ugh. And then we got, I think this was a Canadian release only, if I recall, at least on Blu-ray, and that was a Ray Fiennes movie called The Constant Gardener with uh, Rachel Wise as well, and I heard great things about it. My mom was a massive fan of uh, Ray Fiennes. Uh, he was her favorite, and he's one of my favorites too. I can see what the uh, appeal was because he's just tip-top as far as acting talent goes. And uh, yeah, I heard nothing but great things about that one. And we got another movie I wanted to see but I never did called Eye in the Sky with Helen Mirren. And uh, yeah, this one seems like it'd be pretty cool, but again, I haven't checked it out yet. And then uh, last up for our dear friend uh, JDC Outlet is a film that Tim Burton produced called Nine. And it's with this really cool um, slipcover from Alliance there. And always wanted to see this one, too. You see, I'm kind of making up for lost time. Uh, but this was a kind of more... Was this a PG-13? I think in the U.S. it was. It's just a Canadian PG. But um, I remembered that this was like a slightly like darker, um, like a little bit more adult-oriented animated film. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. Could use some more of that. Kind of this like post-apocalyptic kind of thing. Um yeah, so that's it for JDC Outlet now. Let's get to this month's Horror Pack, shall we? Um, now, if you do not know uh, what Horror Pack is, I'll link in the description below, but uh, basically Horror Pack is a service where you can sign up for either Blu-rays or DVDs, and once a month you get four movies. You don't know what they are. They're in the horror genre, and uh, they tend to have a lot of exclusives and cool things uh, that you can't get anywhere else. Be gone, box. And, uh, yeah, so I don't know what any of these are going to be, so you're going to find out along with me. So first up, we have a movie called Patient Zero. And have I heard of this? I feel like I have. It's very appropriate because it's a pandemic thriller, it says. And uh, it's not... Um, Cabin Fever, Patient Zero, which I know that there that, that one exists, uh, but it's not that. Now, I believe I heard about this film because when I was looking, I created my own little database of pandemic films back in the early days of this pandemic. I wanted to do some research, and I believe I came across this film uh, in that research, but I'd never seen it. It's got uh, uh, Stanley Tucci in it, and I like him a lot. Um... So yeah, Patient Zero. Very appropriate, I think. And then we got our exclusive called Betsy. And look at that, you can barely see it, just a, f a face in there, just barely, because it's so black. It's like, how much more black could this be? And the answer is none. None more black. Um, but yeah, Horror Pack will do these exclusives for um, independent horror filmmakers, and that's just a good way for them to get out their uh, films to the wider viewing public and to horror fans. See, it's it's really cool in person, but it just doesn't really show up too well on camera because this case is so reflective. Um, but yeah, that's a movie called Betsy, and it is from uh, Sean Burkett. That's who directed it. Uh, what else do we have? We have... Um, Oh, Mega Shark versus Mecha Shark. I was actually looking at this uh, to get this, but look at that. There it is. And who do we have? Who do we have? We have Debbie Gibson, Christopher Judge, and Elizabeth Rome, R O H M. And uh, yeah, this is part of the uh, Mecha Shark series, which you saw um, wherever it is. There you are. Uh, you saw uh, Mega Shark vs. Colossus on DVD there, so now we got Mega Shark vs. Mega Shark, and I'm gonna have to track down. Uh, there's a three pack of Mega Shark vs. Giant Octopus and Thirty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea and Mega Piranha. There's a three pack of that that I want to get at some point. I just gotta find it. Um, 
and uh, I'm just trying to open that up there. Um, let's see, I love these uh, Asylum shark films, not even just Sharknado, which is like the cream of the crop, but uh, you know, some of these other ones I think are just fantastic. Um, look at this, the epic battle saga continues on the scale of Transformers and Lord of the Rings. So they, they didn't even have in the tradition of, they had on the scale of, there you go. Which, again, technically not lying, but, and if anything, that's more honest. But, uh, still, it's just so funny that they put that in quotes, and it's like, well, it's not attributed to anybody, so it doesn't really mean anything. And finally, we have the original Annabelle, which I already have. I'm gonna leave that sealed so that I can sell it. So that is it for this episode, boys and girls. Uh, if you like this, then please like, share, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Set phasers to stun Warp Factor 5. Please give JDC Outlet and uh, Horror Pack your love. And be sure to finish off your drink of Unboxing Champions, which is what I'm going to do right now. So I will see you in the next video.